Hi everyone, hope all are fine. Today we made a video on India's 34 interim financial reporting. Myself, Bargo, let's go to today's topics for discussion. Our discussion has been divided into five parts. Number one, definitions of IFR. Number two, types and minimum content to be presented in IFR. Number three, how to recognize and measure items during an interim period. Number four, exceptional case income tax effect. And finally, the disclosures. Our first topic, definitions. We have two definitions to learn in this in days. Number one, what is an interim period? Interim period means a financial reporting period shorter than a full financial year. For example, monthly or quarterly or half early period. Number two, what is an interim financial report? Interim financial report means a financial report issued during an interim period. Our next topic, types and content of IFR. We have two options to report interim financial statements. First option, choosing complete set of financial statements. Under this option, we must prepare interim financial statements like annual financial statements. So we need to follow in DS1 presentation of financial statements. Second option. Choosing condensed set of financial statements. Under this option, we can condense our financial reporting, but we must report the minimum content which will be discussed in the next slide. And out of these two, INDAS recommends second option. Now we know an entity can present interim financial report using either complete set or condensed set. And also we have learned that if an entity adopts second option, it must report the minimum content. So in this current slide, we will see the minimum content to be presented in IFR. First point, interim financial statements shall include the headings and subtotals contained in most recent annual financial statements. Point number two, any additional line items can be added in between the line items of the balance sheet or profit and loss only if they are material. Last point is to present the basic and diluted earnings per share after computing profit after tax. My dear viewers, here comes the most important topic of this in days that is how to recognize and measure items during interim period. Number one, accounting policies. Same annual accounting policies are used in interim periods as well. But any change in accounting policies must be applied retrospectively. Number two, revenues. Revenues of one interim period shall not be deferred to any other interim periods. For example, during festive seasons, clothing industries revenue will be higher compared to other periods. So in order to maintain consistent profit in interim financial statements, clothing industry shall not defer its festive season revenue to other periods. Number three, costs. Similarly, like revenues, costs shall not be deferred from one period to another period. There is one exception that is our fourth topic, income tax effect, which will be discussed in next slide. Number four, accounting estimates. Generally, accounting involves use of many estimates, but IFR involves more use of estimates than annual. Our next topic, Exceptional case deferment of income tax cost. Since tax is calculated at the end of the financial year on total income, but the basic and diluted earnings per share calculation is the basic requirement of interim period, our INDAS 34 gave us clarification on how to deal with income tax expense. We have two points to learn. First, as per PERA 30 class C of INDAS 34 interim financial statements, Income tax is recognized in each interim period based on the best estimate of the weighted average annual tax rate expected for the full financial year. Now let's see an example on this. Let's assume quarter 1 actual income is 20,000. But in order to compute weighted average annual tax rate, we need to estimate the remaining quarters. We know that in remaining quarters as well, the income will be the same. Hence, the estimated income for quarter 2, 3, 4 comes to 20,000 each. So, the estimated total income for the financial year is 80,000. If our income exceeds 50,000, then the tax rate will be 30 percentage. 
So estimated tax payable is equal to 80,000 minus 50,000 multiplied by 30% which comes to 9,000. From the above, we know how to calculate weighted average annual tax rate that is estimated tax payable divided by estimated total income multiplied by 100 because percentage. So the 9,000 estimated tax payable divided by estimated total income of 80,000 multiplied by 100 come which comes to 11.25 percentage. Therefore, the quarter one tax expense will be 20,000 into 11.25 weighted average rate which comes to 2,250. Clear? Next second point. If different tax rate apply to different categories of income then to the extent practicable separate them and apply respective tax rates. Let's see this with one example. Assume half early actual income is 20,000 which includes 10,000 capital gains. But in order to arrive at weighted average annual tax rate, we need to estimate all interim periods. So half early two income comes to 30,000. The point two clearly says that in case of different tax rate applied to different categories of income, we need to separate them. So from the estimated total income of 50,000, we are eliminating the capital gains. So the estimated total income comes to 40,000. Tax rate is 10% if income exceeds 20,000. So the estimated tax payable is 20,000 multiplied by 10% which comes to 2,000. From the above we can compute weighted average annual tax rate that is estimated tax payable divided by estimated total income multiplied by 100. That is 2,000 divided by 40,000 multiplied by 100. The weighted average annual tax rate is 5%. From this we can compute the tax expense for the interim period. Therefore, half early one tax expense will be for normal income weighted average tax rate and for capital gains, capital gains rate which comes to 750. I hope you are understanding. Our final topic minimum disclosures during interim period. Number one, any change in accounting policies nature and effect of it has to be disclosed. Number two, any seasonal operations comment. Number three, any unusual items affecting the elements of financial statements, the nature and amount has to be disclosed. Best example here is COVID-19. Number four, any prior period changes in estimates, the nature and amount has to be disclosed. Number five, any changes in financial structure that is debt or equity, redemptions or issues during the current interim period must be disclosed. Number six, any dividends paid during the interim period has to be disclosed. Number seven, the segment information disclosures. This can be disclosed only if India's 108 permits to disclose. Under this, we need to disclose revenues from external customers as well as inter-segment revenues, then segment profit or loss. Next, any material change in amounts disclosed by last financials in assets or uh, liabilities. Then if there is any deviation from the basis of segmentation or se measurement of segment profit or loss, then the description of such deviation has to be disclosed. Then the last point under segment information, we have reconciliation of total reportable segments and discontinued operations. Next main point number 8, events after interim period that have not reflected in the financials. Then number 9, effects of changes in composition of the entity such as business combinations in days 1 or 3. Number 10, financial instruments that disclosure support, fair value has to be disclosed. Last point, entities becoming or ceases to be investing entities as defined in India's 110. These are the minimum disclosures to be made during the interim period. Now let's recap what we have discussed so far. We covered definitions, types and minimum content. Number 3, recognition and measurement of items. Number 4, income tax effect and finally disclosures. In case of any doubts, please comment below. Thank you so much guys. Take care.